All right, so mean value theorem. So we're gonna have, okay, mean, if I'm just doing basic math, the mean is what? Average. Average, not angry. Come on now. He's angry. Um, so for this, it's going to be the average area under the curve. Okay, so the average of it. So I start off with 1 over B minus A of my bounds from A to B of F of X. So the average value is the height of the rectangle with base from B to A, whose area equals the area under the graph of F of X between those two bounds there where x is equal to that so basically looking for the average area from here to here the average area okay that's what we're looking for all right so we're pretend like we actually you know paying attention right now so for this one if i was going to write this as an integration i would write what Integration. One to three. X squared dx. X squared dx. And if we're finding the average value of this, I would add what? One third. One half. Three minus one, right? Yeah. Okay. So for that one, so it's going to be equal to one half. Oh, joy. One half. And so from right here, I'm gonna end up with, now, when I do my integration of that, remember I always add one to the exponent, so it's gonna be x cubed over three, and it's gonna be from, oh, oh nice. I know, right? Oh, wait, a quick plug, please subscribe. I know, joy. Anyway, all right, so my from three there. So if you look, I'm going to have one half times the top one is going to be 27, right? Yeah. 27 divided by three gives me nine. And the lower bound, so it's going to be minus my lower bound, which is one third, one third right? So do the math, it should be, what's that, 27 over three minus one is 26 over three. So still one half times 26 over three, then times that one half, which is out front, I've been carrying it over. So I will reduce that, so I end up with 13 over three. So there's my x squared function on there. And then I'm going to try and go from 1 to 3. So 1, 2, 3. So the average of this right here is going to be 13 thirds. Or as a decimal, you come up with something. The 4.3? Should we shade that? 4.333. 4 Repeating, right? Put a little line up on the screen. Okay, I like fractions better. All right, so let's take a look at the next problem. So for this right here, find the average value of this on the interval. Find all values at x, for which that the function is equal to the average value. So the function is equal to the average value. The function. Well, that's what I was pointing out. Yeah. Thank you. I missed that one. I'll, I'll underline that one. Okay. He's a math teacher before he was teacher. Okay, so for this right here, it's going to be my integral from. One. Oh, wait, you're doing the exit first. One. Okay, so it's going to be, yeah, so one over four minus one, and it's from one to four of. Three x so the work was right. But I was actually trying to solve it a different way, and it was for a different type of problem. When we're actually trying to do solving for an unknown variable here, we're not actually trying to find the function, the output value. All right, so for this right here, I'm gonna get, let me see, that gives me one over three 
times. Now do my integration. It's x cubed over 3, which is just going to give me x cubed and minus. So that's going to become x squared over 2. So that's going to cancel out the 2. So it's just going to be minus x squared from 1 to 4. And let's go ahead and carry it down and plug it in. So it's going to be 1 third from, uh, let me see, that's going to be, my first part is going to be 64 minus 16 minus my lower bound, which is going to be 1 minus 1. So we're going to come up with, bring over my 1 third times, okay, on the inside, my lower bound is just going to give me zero, right? Lower bound is going to be zero, but the upper bound is 48. And 48 times 1 third is going to give me 16. And now we want to see when the function is equal to that. So we go back to the original function, the lowercase f of x. So set it equal to 16. So I should have 16 equals 3x squared minus 2x. Is there, is, are, are values have to be inside the interval? Yes, values have to be within that interval. And so let's take a look. So now first thing, I'm going to set it equal to 0. If I set it equal to 0, what do I get? So subtract it. 3x squared minus 2x minus 16. All right, uh, let me see. Factoring it, I should come up with a middle term of negative eight, positive six, right? Yep. So AC method, A times C is negative 48, and then has to equal negative two. The product of AC is going to give me a sum of negative two. That's going to be a negative eight and positive six. Yeah. So negative eight times positive six is going to give me negative 48. Add those two together, it's going to give me negative two. So there's my middle term right there that I'm going to replace. It's zero equals three x squared minus eight x plus 6, x minus 16. And then factor by grouping. Let's group two at a time. So take out an x. And I have 3x minus 8. And take out a positive 2. Left with 3x minus 8. Okay, so they have, there we go. Okay, right here, so both these right here are common. So zero equals three X minus eight in the trash, what is left over. So I have the X plus two, it's leftovers. Okay, usually those just leftovers end up in the trash. I don't know how you guys do leftovers Not at your Thanksgiving. house. Okay. All right, so now if I were to do this, set each one equal to zero. So here x is equal to eight thirds, and this one x is equal to positive two. Oh, wait, sorry, sorry. That should be right there. So that'd be a negative two. Sorry about that. All right, so from here I have a negative two and a eight thirds. Now let's look at my interval again. So my interval is from one to four. So from one to four, I only have one place in which that is equal to eight thirds. So this one, negative two, does not work. Why does it equal to three? It's a negative. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But eight thirds is gonna be, uh, was it 2.3? 2.6, yes, 2.6. Anyway, all right, so 2.6 repeating for that one right there. So we only have one place in which that this 
is going to be equal to my function value. Yes, no, maybe? Okay, so let's take a look at my last problem here. Now, I have to go through and read this to figure out what information is given to me and what I need to find. Have a graph, have this, this, and this. So let's see. Now, if I am looking at my bounds, if I'm looking at my so my bounds is y equals 0. So if I were to draw a graph right there, y equals 0, that would be here. It's on the x-axis, right? And the bounds of x equals 0 would be right here. Other bound is going to be x equals two. All right, so give it a second for this to start up again. Um, so for this one right here, my other bound is going to be x equals two. And I'm looking for the area in this right here. I'm not going to worry about graphing my function. So it has a y-intercept positive 2, so it should be something like this. It, it's a positive x squared, so it should be going up there. Right? Okay, this is the y-intercept. I don't know if you guys recall this from your algebra. Your y-intercept is here, so this is going to be a 2x squared. x squared is a parabola that's going to be opening up, right? And so it is going to go this way. Now, so if I were to translate in that, that to an integral, my integral is going to be, my lower bound is 0, and it goes to 2, and my function is going to be 2x squared minus 3x plus 2 dx. Is it the one over 2 Is it... Now, is it asking for the average area or just the area? Just the area. So I'm not looking for average area this time, I'm just looking for area. So this one is slightly different just because it's, it's giving you the bounds written like this. So you have to actually think about this. So that means that it's from here and it's just gonna be in here. From zero to two is this piece right here, but it's above my axes here. Yes? Okay, so now, given that, given that, let's go ahead and do my integration of this. So it's going to be x cubed over 3, right? So 2x cubed over 3 minus from 0 to 2. And let's plug in our bounds. I'm plugging in my bounds. 2 to the third power is going to be 8 times 2. So it's 16 over 3. Now, we're plugging in 2, so this is going to be 2 squared is times 3 divided by 2 minus 6. And then plus, this is all my upper bound. Minus my lower bound, zero, minus zero, plus zero. So we have positive zero? Yes, there is a positive zero. Because I have zero here for this first one, minus a zero, plus 
another zero. I'm just keeping a count of all my things that I'm plugging in. Kind of like I did over here. I kept a count of everything I plugged in. For each one of my terms, they all came out to be zero. All right, so given this right here, I'm gonna end up with, let's see, if I, if I do my fractions right here, it's 16 over three, and this is 18 over three, and this one right here is gonna be 12 over three, and all that's gonna be zero. So it's negative two over three plus 12 over three is 10 over three. Or if you're one of those people that like decimals, that would be 3.333333. Yeah, okay. Makes sense? All right, questions, concerns, complaints? Now, I want to take a look at the, the next practice. Your guys' actual thing here. Now, this is your worksheet for this. Now, if I'm trying to find the area of the shaded region, I'm not given the bounds, but can you figure them out? If you notice, these are actually ending up at zero, aren't they? So this is where the x is equal to zero. So now for right here, if I factor it out and set it equal to zero, it's where the function is equal to zero. One is gonna be equal at zero here, and the other one's gonna be equal at If I factor it, it's one. gonna look x, and it's gonna be one minus x, right? One plus one. So my lower bound is zero. zero. My lower bound would be zero, right? right. Lower bound would no, be zero, the upper bound is positive one. positive one. So there's your bounds. Go ahead, find your integration. Now, if I'm gonna do the same thing again, let's take a look right here on number two. Before you guys are doing your math, number two. What is my lower bound? Zero. Zero. It's already factored for you, so that one should give you, right? So it's that rad, rad x is gonna give you zero, isn't it? And then this is gonna give you what? Three. Three. Pause and three. Now, over here. Now, this is a cosine function. And if it's right here on the axis, this would be from zero to where is cosine equal to zero? So which is it? So look at the graph, <clears throat> look at the graph. So it's not even making a whole wave, isn't it? So if I'm thinking about my unit circle, where does cosine come out to be zero? Pi halves. pi halves, that's what I'm looking for, right? So this is pi halves. So it's from zero to pi halves, okay? So this is the area, so that's one way. And find the area, this is gonna give you a bounded region. Find the value of C, mean value theorem. Okay. Size four font. Yep.